Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my live quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. everybody welcome to our show I'm so happy to see you I'm so excited about tonight's show and I hope you are too whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube make sure you introduce yourself put your name in the comments and where you're tuning in from uh, no matter if you're Facebook YouTube make sure you subscribe and like our page so you never miss a show we have quite the show ahead we're kicking off our first quilt along of the year the Wanda quilt along um, so I know you all have been waiting for this. We've been talking about it for a while. So I love all the fabric combination that, combinations that you've been posting uh, in Gudrun's Quilt Crew on Facebook. So I cannot wait to see some amazing Wanda quilts come together. Now please use the thumbs up and hearts as we go through our show. If you're watching on a mobile device or on, on um, Facebook. And then, of course... If you're on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Uh, we always, of course, have a winner every show. Two winners every show. We have a live winner that's chosen randomly from your comments. So the more you comment, the better chances to win. And then we have a giveaway question at the end. So if you're not able to catch us live, you can still win. And we pull from everybody, both from YouTube and Facebook, joined in. So on our last show... Our question, our giveaway question was, what was your favorite project of 2020? And our winner is Ruth Westfall Hagen, and her favorite quilt was the Hope Quilt. So congratulations. Ruth, you have won a $25 gift card to the G Quilt Designs store. We will get a hold of you. If you have purchased from us before, we will just send you an email. If not, send us an email help at geequiltdesigns.com or send us a message through social media. Now, a lot of you like the Hope Quilt or the Elvira or the Harmony. Um, that, those were our three kind of full one-day sew-alongs last year, so it was really fun to read through all your, all your answers during, after last, uh, last show last week. So I have to start by saying a special hello to some new viewers. I wanted to um, kind of do a little shout out. I did a lecture last Friday night for the South Ford Falls Quilt Guild in Connecticut. So I got to spend the night in Connecticut Friday night. <laughs> um, but I met some wonderful quilters there. So if you're watching, welcome, welcome. We're glad to have you here. Um, and thanks for spending a Friday night with me. And I wanted to thank them for, for hiring me for, for that lecture. I have another lecture <clears throat> coming up on Saturday morning, actually with the Northern Lights Machine Quilters that are just up in Duluth, Minnesota. So not too far away, but I'll be here. They'll be in their homes, nice and safe, and we'll be chatting on Saturday morning. So uh, very much looking forward to meeting all of them as well. So as if you're wondering about my lecture information, you can find all that on the website under workshops and lectures. Of course, I'm not doing any workshops uh, these days and no in-person anything, So, um, but I am doing virtual lectures for groups. So <clears throat> check that out. If you are interested, if you have a guild or a group that want, is interested in booking, just send me an email and we can figure that out. And they can pretty much, yeah, you know, back in, the, back in <laughs> earlier last year, we, I was booking events probably two to three years out. And so my scheduled calendar was completely full. But nowadays, we can sometimes squeeze in with a very short notice. So that's pretty interesting and uh, fun because I'm a spontaneous girl. So I, I like that. All right. So I think it's without further ado. I think we are all here, all excited to get going, aren't we? So I think it's time for our Wanda. Um, before we kick it off, though, um, make sure to, if you ha are totally new here and do, don't know anything what we're talking about, so on my website, we have put together a blog post. So if you're going to follow along the Wanda Quilt Along, go to the website and hit that blog button. There's a blog post there about the whole Quilt Along. So all of the little links, all of the information that you need will be there. So um, we will be adding links to all the videos. So this is a four-part uh, quilt along. So we're doing part one tonight. 
And then so to find the other parts, the blog is the place to go. So it will be updated as we move through the quilt along. So every time you need to find anything, just go there. So the pattern that, you, that we're doing is the Wanda quilt. It's on the cover of the brand new Stripology and Mixology book. Also hanging on the wall right behind me. And it is available both in printed form or as an ebook. So you will need it. The pattern is nowhere else. So if you were one of the first ones to get the book, and um, you may have not received the little correction card in your book for the Wanda yardage fabric. There's a misprint in the book. So the background fabric for Wanda, um, there is a correction on the website. You will find that pattern correction page on my website on the bottom. If, you, if you're on the home page, scroll all the way to the bottom. There's a little menu there that will have that pattern corrections. So check that out on the footer menu on the home page. But if you all are ready to roll, I think it's time to get started. What is the best part about Wanda? Well, it's just a wonky nine patch, right? So couldn't we just sew together nine five inch squares and then take our squared ruler and twist it and trim it to a wonky nine patch? I'm sure you've seen wonky nine patches everywhere. But to do that, we would of course need nine squares per block, which means for a quilt, that like our lap size quilt with 20 blocks, we would need 180 five inch squares. But Wanda, is, we're gonna do different things differently with Wanda. Wanda is going to be made with only five squares per block. Yes, this is only five squares per block. So you heard me right, we only need 100 squares for 20 blocks. 180 or 100? Do you know how much fabric we save? A yard and a half almost. A yard and a half. Do I need to say it again? So this is why I love, I love playing with these types of techniques to save, our, save us some fabric and learn a little few different techniques in the process um, and have some fun. So a yard and a half. I mean, that's almost enough to make a whole nother quilt, whole nother Wanda quilt. So, so let's get started. So first off, I did talk a little bit about in previous episode about our fabric selection, about our five inch squares. So most of you have your five inch squares cut out already. And I talked about uh, some of you having them just scrappy random. Some of you were going to divide them into lights and darks and others were maybe just going to do two colors. So for example, the quilt behind me, I just used pretty much two colors. So I did oranges and then gray blacks. So those are the two colors that I alternated. And so I could treat them as lights and darks. And um, so the one that I'm going to be using, I am using a, a bundle that we have still in the store. It's called Chardin de Lise. And I kind of split them into two groups, kind of light and dark, although they're going to look pretty scrappy. So as you know with a nine patch, so usually when you're making a regular nine patch, you, either, you have contrast between, so darks will either be on the four opposite corners and then the lights on the four, on the five, on the four, four corners in the middle, and then the four, these will be dark or vice versa. So the four corners will be dark and the middle will be dark and um, these four will be lighter. So we will be making both versions with our squares but we are going to go through this first part of the quilt along we're going to go through the book of course so you will need the book you will need to have it handy because i'm not going to talk about all the different numbers and sizes you can have to refer to that in your book because many of you are doing multiple different sizes from crib to king who knows so um we're going to go from step one through step six tonight which is making all of our a blocks so the first step is um, actually sorting our fabric. So we have, according to your whatever pattern, so let's look at this on the overhead. So I have my dark squares and I have my light squares. 
And so you want to have equal number if you're going to do the light and darks. If you have just really scrappy squares and you're not going to worry about lights and darks, then this will just be one pile. But we want to split this into two groups, one group A to use for our A blocks and group B for our B blocks. So if you're doing lights and darks or just two colors like I did with my original Wanda that is on the cover of the, of the book, then you want to make sure that you have equal numbers of lights and darks in both groups. So I am making the uh, lap size, so which means I needed 100 squares. So I have 50 squares in each group, 25 dark and 25 light. Does that make sense? So that is our first step. Now, then from there, we're going to start making, in the, if we move on in the pattern, so the pattern, by the way, starts on page 55 in the book. So it will tell you up top in the cutting chart, it will tell you up top how many blocks you're making uh, and how many of each A and B you're going to be making. So it's a really nice reference. So then we're going to go into the next steps and we're going to start sewing our two squares together. So I have my lights and darks. Now here's a little tip that is not in the book. So in the book I just tell you to start pairing up your squares and make the actual number stated in the pattern. But what I like to do is if you, and especially if you want to kind of choose which fabrics are going to be in the middle of your blocks, I kind of want to set these aside right away. So for example, of these, this is my A group of fabrics. I know I'm going to need to make 10 blocks and five of those blocks are going to have a light center and five of those blocks are going to have a dark center. So I can just right away take five squares from my lights that I'm going to use for my centers and set them aside because then I don't have to be counting and worrying about anything else. I can just kind of chain piece. So here I have my five and then I'll pull my five from the darks and I can do just whatever. Of course you can be more methodical. Um, I've seen, saw some people with their fabric pulls that they were going to have all of the same pattern in the middle, which is a great idea. So there's my five. So I'm just going to set these aside so they don't kind of get in the way accidentally sewn together because you know when we get into the chain piecing bliss that sometimes we over sew. So now I just have my lights and darks. And I don't know if you want to really pair them up. Mine are pretty scrappy so I don't really care what goes together. So this step of the way we're just going to lay them right sides together and sew them together with a quarter inch seam and just keep going through all the whole stack. And then you have all the pairs that you will need for the block A. So I'm going to move this over and switch out. I have my squares now sewn together here. So we'll see they are just a dark sewn to a light. And what I've done too is gone ahead and pressed them to um, I just press them to the dark, but we're going to be doing a little trick on the, on the pressing. And so when I press all the time, what you want to do when you're pressing is first you want to just go over the seam to set the seam, and then you want to fold it out, always press from the right side, use your fingers, and then just follow straight across with your iron. All right, so all of your pairs are going to get pressed, and from there we are going to do some cutting. And so here is where I'm going to show you the few different tools. So you can use obviously the Stripology squared ruler or the XL. You can also use the original Stripology ruler if you have that one. Or I'm also just going to show you how to do it with regular uh, tools. So not a non-Stripology ruler. Yeah, that was sewn fast, wasn't it? <laughs> But of course we have step out so that the demo doesn't take too long for you guys. So I have now, what I'm going to do is cut these apart. So this is all explained in step, um, I don't remember exactly which step in the book it is. But so next step is we're going to cut these guys apart diagonally. So I'm going to do just one at a time so I can show you with the different tools. But normally I probably would stack two of them up like this and cut them at the same time. You know what, actually I think I can do that. We're going to stack two of them up at the, t at the same time and use different tools. So this part, do not worry too much to be 
super accurate about it because you're going to see in the end, because we square our blocks in the end, that it's all going to work out. So I have my block here. If you're using the Excel or the squared ruler, let me go up here so we can see this. Um, I'm going to move this ironing pad out of the way a little bit so we can have more room. There we go. So what we want to do is find our zero slit and then the zero line on the bottom. This is going to be the exact same on the Excel ruler. So I am of course using my stickers and for this first part I'm using the red sticker. So I like to put a red a ruler sticker, these stickers, right on the zero corner. And then the other sticker is going along my one inch slit and it's kind of between the 10 and a half and 11 inch. It's, it doesn't have to be accurate, but I'm putting it on the one inch slit between the 10 and a half and 11 inch horizontal line. All right, and here's why. So in the pattern, I tell you to lay the ruler here so that the edges of the unit are aligned with the zero slit and the zero line on the bottom. So then we're just going to keep this corner in place and twist the ruler clockwise until the top right corner of the unit hits that one inch slit. And because I just put my sticker there, I know I can just line up the two opposite corners of the units with my arrows. So it really speeds up the process on laying this the right way. So can everybody see? It's the same thing with the Excel ruler. As you can see, there's a zero here. And then I put my other sticker right there and it's already laid in place. All right. So then I always use a different color on the bottom to mark which slit to cut through. So this one, we're cutting through the zero slit like this. And we have our units cut apart. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave these separate because as you can see, they're the same unit, but this one is the lights and this one is the darks. So we're gonna put them in two different piles. I'm gonna leave them up here. Um, and then I'm gonna show you just one more. We're gonna do the other pair. With this one, I just wanted to show you if you have the original stripology ruler, you can use that. The only thing that's different, instead of there being a zero line, it's just the two inch line here on the bottom. So you can use the two inch line, and so instead of being between the ten and a, putting your arrow between the ten and a half and eleven, it's actually you just add two inches to it. It will be between the twelve and a half and the thirteen. And I can also show you another way how to figure out where to put your arrow. You can just start. So I'm going to put this bottom uh, left corner on the two inch mark and the one inch slit. So then I just turn until that one inch slit hits that corner like there. And then I can just pop my arrow there for future. Like when you're cutting a lot of these, it's really nice to just have the arrows placed and then you just can place that ruler right away as it should be. And then I'm going to use a different color. I like to always use the same color for my cut line, so I'm going to use the yellow arrow for my cut. And that's going to be my cut line through here. Put both, pieces face up. both pieces face up. Yes, you want to put them face up. It's not going to, uh, because if we put them face down, you're cutting a different angle. So we want to make sure everything is face up when you're cutting it. So again, now you'll see we have opposite units. This one big piece has the dark, and this big piece has the light, like this. All right, I'm going to show you one more with using regular tools. So I'm going to take these two and lay them like this. It's all described in the book. And so you just want to take a any ruler, any ruler, and you want to have a marker. What happened to my pen? That's always, I lose stuff when I am ready to go. Of course, it's on the floor. All right, so I have just any pen, and what you want to do is just mark a half inch from the bottom left corner 
and a half inch from the top right corner. And then all you're going to do is lay a ruler from that corner to this corner and cut. Just be careful when you're cutting this and you're going to have the same result here. This one being the light on the top and dark. So you can put these in two piles. Another little trick, if you don't feel like marking, if you have cutting mats that have um, these, this cutting mat has half inch increments, so I can just lay the, the units right so they're aligned with the lines here. I know this is a half inch in here. I don't need to make the mark. So I can just place my ruler on this line here and then a half inch from the top up here because like I talked about earlier, it doesn't have to be completely accurate because we are squaring everything up in the end. So now same thing, we have dark and light. So I'm going to pop that over here. And now we are ready to move on to our next step. So once we have these cut out, there's one little thing we want to do with our iron, and that is because we want to have all of these seams going towards the bigger unit. It's going to be really helpful when we start piecing these. So for these guys, they, these are going to be going down. So I will just take these four with a light on top and just flop this over. So this is the only time I will press from the other side. Just when I need to switch that seam to the other direction. So I'm just doing it with my finger and then letting my iron come across to finish the job. So this way, and now they're all flipped. I'm going to do the other four. So you want to make sure that all of your units are flipped. The wool mats, we are actually going to be getting them in stock. I really like this. Um, I like this wool mat. Uh, I would not recommend doing a whole lot of iron pressing with your cutting mat underneath. You might ruin your cutting mat, but I'm just, I have mine on really low heat and it's just this little thing. So just for TV purposes, we're doing it like this. The cutting mat is, of course, the Creative Grids cutting mat that I designed myself. And this side is the stripology side. All right, so now we have our units, and we have four that have the lighter, big, big um, unit, and then we have four that have the darker, big unit. All right, so I now have set aside the light squares that I was going to use for this one, um, a light square and a dark square here. Oh, it wasn't this one. It was this one and this one. So... The ones with the dark, if you're doing lights and darks. Now, if you're not doing one, one, doing, you're just doing scrappy, you don't have to worry about this. But the light square goes with the dark, bigger units, and the dark square goes with the light, bigger units. Make sense? So now it's time to piece our, do our partial seams. And I know that's a scary word, but I promise you it's not scary at all. If you want to audition your blocks, you can do that. So you can just place your center square, and then these are going to just go around. I, some, I like to do it when I'm doing uh, things like this, because I don't want to accidentally put the same fabrics next to each other. So I can kind of try it out and see what it looks like. So you're just going to put them around like this. Okay, I like how this looks. So this is going to be look, look, looking like that. And then I'm going to do the other one. So I'm also just laying out two blocks because that's a little bit of a trick I have. Because when we're doing partial seams, you can't really, there's no really good way to chain piece. But that's why I lay, always lay out two blocks. I'm always sewing two blocks at a time. But so I laid them out and this looks good to me. I don't think I need to switch things around. So now I'm ready to sew. So I'm going to start with the center square and I'm going to take the, the first unit, the one on the right side here, and this one is just going to flip, be flipped right over and you can see that you can align the 90 degree corner right in the corner here. You, you're not going to be able to use this corner so there's no way to do this opposite. 
you want to have a 90 degree corner and a 90 degree corner and you're going to put this right here so that now we're going to start sewing right here with our quarter inch seam and we're going to sew down and then we're going to stop about an inch inch and a half from the edge so stop here and and um you can clip the threads i usually what i was telling you earlier i usually am working on two so i'll do this one to here and then i'll take the next block and feed that into my machine but we're just going to focus on one at a time Partial seams is easy, I promise you. It's so easy. So here I have this first seam done on this unit. I'm going to move this out of the way because it might be confusing for everybody. So this is my first step. Sewed that one. So now I have this one sewn on, right? I sewed down to here, so about an inch, inch and a half away. And then when I'm doing a full partial seams block, I do not go to the iron and press in between. I just finger press and you always want to press away from the center square. So I'm just going to push this seam out here and use my fingers and you'll see that it's not sewn all the way and that's how we want it to be. So that's why it's just nice to finger press it. So now this whole side is complete. So that means this next piece goes here. And because we pressed this, we can flip this on top and these two seams are gonna nest perfectly. So I make sure I nest these and pop a pin in here. And you'll see that this will fit perfectly corner to corner here. But this little tip will extend over here. Don't worry about that. So now we're going to sew this side. We're going to sew all the way down, all the way to the end. And once we're done with that, we are going to finger press again. So I have my next unit here, magically swapping out. So here's my, my next unit sewn on. I sew, sew it all the way down, and now I'm going to finger press that here. And we have this side. This is still open all right so now we have this side ready to go so I take my next piece and again I will nest the seam in the middle pin and then sew all the way all right so now once that one is done I press that outwards finger press and we only have one more side one more unit to put on so then, because this one is only partly sewn, I just pull this one down, and then we have this open and free. So I can take this piece, lay it on here, nest the center, pin it, and I can sew all the way down this way. All right, so that is right here. I, this is what I just did. I sewed all the way down this way. Finger press that out. And now the last step, we take our flap, we fold this back over, and again, we want to nest the seam here. I pop a pin in here, but then I put this under my machine. I put my needle down first, right in the seam, just a few stitches up, not right where the seam ended. So you want to put it just a few stitches up where you put your needle down, into that seam and then you put your foot down and all you do is just finish your seam all the way and then you're ready to press your block so then once you're pressing you want to just push it out and then press everything away from that middle so that once you have that pressed out you will have those seams in the middle all going away from it and then the rest of them are kind of going in a circle so there's your block. That's it. And yes, we have these weird little sticky things. So the last step of making the A blocks is we just got to trim it up. So trimming it, and we're making them down to, bringing them down to a nine and a half inch square. So I, of course, like to use my either my squared ruler or the Axel ruler. They are designed the same. 
Of course it is easy. Everything is G easy around here. So uh, the XL ruler and the squared rule are the same. Um, so for squaring up ha half inch blocks, like we're going to nine and a half, we're using the white lines. So with the squared, the lines are just overlapped. So the black lines are for whole inch sizes, the white lines are for half inch sizes. On the XL, it's really nice because we have the black lines over here for, for whole inch sizes, but for squaring up half inch sizes, we're going to turn the ruler over and we have the white lines here on the other side. So what I like to do when I am squaring up a whole bunch of blocks the same size, I like to just outline the four corners. So you just find the nine and a half inch square, which is here's my eight and a half, so the next one over is, is nine and a half. So I put the blue arrows on the four corners of the block. And then down here on the bottom, you will see that there are squares here that say nine and a half and nine and a half. So those are the slits that you want to cut through. So I put yellow arrows there. If you don't, if you have the squared ruler, it will not have those markings. So all you have to do is just here, I have marked my four blue arrows and I just go down and these are the slits I'm cutting through, the one and a half and the 11. So I just pop my, my cut stickers on there and then that lessens my chance of making mistakes when I'm cutting. All right. If you have the original stripology ruler, you can create the square by just using the stickers. So I would just put stickers, use that two inch line here um, as your zero, or you can also use that, that white here, but it's a little bit easier with a two, because then you, all you do is put a mark on the 11 and a half, and then you go to your nine and a half on each side, and then you can use that to square up. So, how we square up, we take our block, and because there's nothing to line up, these are crooked, and you know, we can turn them any which way once we get it to the quilt, so it doesn't really matter. We don't have to line up anything, all we have to do is take that nine and a half inch square, center it on the block. So I just center it so I'm cutting equally off of each side. And so here's the question, if you had a question about what if my squares were a little wonky, what to start with if you used a charm pack, for example, it doesn't matter because see, you have a lot of wiggle room. So now I'm just going to cut through the nine and a half on each side, trimming the two sides, and then I'm going to just turn my block. The ruler is so great because it holds the block in place. So now when I'm doing the second cut, what I want to do is use that line here, horizontal line on the top to line up with the edge of the cut, the cut edge. And the question I get a lot when I'm teaching is that these are really thick lines. How do you know if to line up the fabric with the top of the line or the bottom of the line. It really doesn't matter because we're making cuts this way. So whether you line it at the top of the line or the bottom of the line, the cut is going to be completely accurate either way. So it really doesn't matter. So I'm just centering it and then making my two cuts. And then you have a perfectly squared up block and nothing moves. And here we go. Now, of course, if you start with smaller squares, if your squares were a little smaller and you don't have enough room to square up to nine and a half, guess what? Just go down, square it to nine inches. Not a big deal. All right, so one thing I wanted to mention too, because I know I get that question a lot, what if we're using directional fabrics? As you can see, mine are a lot, very much directional. And uh, what I'm gonna say with that, it's really hard to control direction with this pattern. And I, my question, my answer is really, it really doesn't matter. Look at these birds are flying this way, but it's such a small piece. So you really can't tell which direction. Here's a bird. It's on the side, but really don't care. But the ones that matter are the ones in the middle. So if you have a fabric that is really directional and you want to showcase it, make sure you use it for the centers. Don't worry about the outsides. You can always some of them, this one happened to be correct. Um, this one, actually the birds are flying 
oh, opposite way, so it doesn't matter. It's not really a directional fabric. So, so I don't really care about it, so I hope um, you just kind of let loose and, and don't worry about it too much. All right, so that is the whole demo for Block A. I know I whipped through this, but remember, quilt alongs are for you to first watch, and then you can always go back and watch again and pause and watch again as you are making your blocks. So we are going to open it up for some questions. Um, for, for the quilt along, if you're following along, we are going to be working on uh, the B blocks next week. So you have a whole week to work on your A blocks and even if you don't finish them, uh, that's okay. Is there a mini version of the ruler, I don't know if you're asking about the ruler or the pattern. The pattern is not, there's not a mini version of the pattern yet, but there's a mini version of the ruler. But that ruler is too small to work with these, these size blocks. Uh, but the mini ruler is awesome <laughs> for smaller things. All right, should you set aside 10 lights and, and darks for, for B for a lap quilt? So go back to the beginning. You split your squares, all your squares into A and B. And if you're doing lights and darks, you want to have equal lights and darks in A and equal lights and darks in B. Okay? So depending on what size you're making, I can't tell you how many squares. If you have 15 in each pile after taking your 10 centers, what about the leftover one from pairing them up? So if <laughs> you have 50 squares in each pile and you take 10 out you should have 40 left if you're making a lap size so uh, I'm not sure about your math so maybe count your squares again what you started with uh, that's for lap size but it's going to be different for each size some of them you might have some extras um, after the diagonal cut do we use both pieces or are some not used no you use both because you cut the diagonal and remember I'll show you remember you get the light, the dark bigger piece and then you get the ones that have the light bigger piece so four pairs make two blocks one block with the light center and one block with a dark center does that make sense okay I'm using a layer cake but notice it's not exactly 10 inch by 10 inch it's more like 10 and 25 by 9 and 75 any ideas if this still will work? So what I would do, I would trim it to 10. If it's over 10, you're fine. Uh, I would trim it to 10 on the one side. So you cut two 5-inch, right? And then when you're turning it to cut it into two 5-inch the other way, and it's only 975, just cut them equally in half. So your squares might be a little short on one side. So what I recommend when you sew the two together, when you're doing the pairs, so when you sew the two together, um, sew the, sh the shorter one, when you're sewing them together, just center the shorter one, center the shorter one on the wider one. And so then when you're doing your diagonals, it's not going to matter at all because you see you'll have plenty to trim off. So um, for that size, it's not going to matter that much. If it was more than that, I would kind of think about it. But um, what you could also do, if you have squares that are maybe nine and a half by ten, I would probably just cut them down to nine and a half and then cut them into fourths so that all of your squares that you're starting with are the same size. And then just follow the pattern. Your center square needs to be that same size too. So then you just follow the pattern. And uh, once you get to trimming your block, if you can't get nine and a half, just go a step down and trim it to a little bit smaller block. Um, the book has us cut on the half inch slit. That's correct. You line up on the one inch slit, you cut on the half. That's what I did. I may have said something wrong, but I cut on the, on the half inch slit. What brand of cutting mat do you have with half inch marks? So that's the Creative Grids cutting mat um, designed by me. So one side has just your regular markings, like a regular um, cutting mat. The other side has the stripology side, so there's no numbers to interfere because I want my stripology rulers to, I want to be able to see all the numbers, and it just has horizontal lines and um, one inch line grid going this way, half inch going horizontally. 
So we sew um, counterclockwise. Yes, yeah, so the A blocks are sewn counterclockwise. You start on the one side and then we go counterclockwise. It will make sense. As soon as you sew that first one, there's only one side you can do, go to. It will make sense once you do it. It's some, sometimes, as you probably know, when you look at something, it looks hard. But once you start doing it, it's not at all. What's the largest size of the mat available? This is the largest one I have. It's the 24 by 36. It is actually 25 by 37 because it has a half inch edge. We sell the mats. We sell the mats, yes. GEquiltsigns.com. We have all the sizes. We even now are able to ship the big one. All right, more questions. What is the difference between block A versus block B? Block A is tilted one way. You'll see them. You alternate. Block B's are going to be tilted the other way. So we're going to do them reversed. It just makes it more playful and fun. Do you use a scant quarter inch seam or a quarter inch seam? Always. So this is such a topic that I talk about all the time. Scant quarter inch seam should be used always when you're quilting, always when you're doing piecing. And, and a scant quarter inch only means it's scant by a needle width or two. It's only so that that fabric has room to fold over when we're pressing so that when we have it pressed, it's a perfect quarter inch. And so that's the only way to know that is to do your measuring. Um, check out my video. It's, it's called Piecing Accuracy. It's a great video to show you how to figure out. It's not, all, accuracy does not just, it's not just about your seam allowance, but it, there's a, a great way to show, see how, where your seam allowance is good and then all the other parts that go into it. So always throughout scant quarter inch seam. When you know where that is on your machine, you're good. Because every, every machine is different. Every quarter inch foot that's supposed to be a quarter inch foot is different. You have to measure it. Do the seams line up with the corners? No, they do not. So um, let me see. Can I show? So see, they're not lined up with the corners. So you will have space. So they're just wonky fun. Because we're just going to center it when we're squaring it up. So don't worry about any seams lining up with anything. Beautiful thing, right? <laughs> All right, any more questions? And you know, keep those questions coming. If you are on Facebook, make sure if you're not in Goodrin School Crew, our closed group on Facebook, uh, but in Goodrin School Crew, if you have questions, Post them there. I will answer them there. Also, post them in the comments. I will go through all the comments. Probably not until tomorrow night. You know, no, I'm having surgery tomorrow, so uh, I'll be couch bound for a while. So I'll have plenty of time to answer all your questions. So are all the A blocks light centers and the B blocks dark centers? No. So you'll be making light and dark centers because so from from the so if you took four pairs. You cut them apart, you'll get a, a dark center block and a light center block. So out of my, out of my four sets of squares, I will get a dark, uh, light center block and a dark center block. Okay? So you'll be, if you're making lap size, for example, you're making 10 A blocks, five of them will have light centers, five of them will have dark. All right? All right, somebody was, that's a great question. Um, Diana's question. You want to put that one up? When you stop short on the first block, how do you chain piece the next? So um, let me find that first piece. Okay, so when I'm demoing and I'm showing, I, I just throw things around, so I don't even know where it is now. <laughs> oh, there it is. So, no, that's not it, but I can still explain it. Oh, here it is here. So, um, Let's go to the overhead, my messy table here. So as you're sewing this one, I sew down here and I stop, right? And then I'm working on the two blocks at the same time. So then I have to sew this other block. Um, and so I'll have this ready. What I do, I lift the, my foot, this piece turns out this way, and I just stitch straight through here. You can even see it. I did it on this. Do you think you can see it? Can you? Oh, it doesn't focus on it. Anyway, so you do, I just stitch out here, and then I can lead this next one in. I'll stop right here, and then I clip from behind. Clip from behind, 
and I add the next piece and then turn this one, feed it out, and then I can sew this one. Clip from behind and keep going this way. And then I'm always chain piecing uh, the two blocks. So then when I finish that last seam on the second block, I actually get the next two ready and get those started and then clip the other two from behind and press them. So that's how I like to work. Um, just more efficient and saving thread and time. And still not working on too many so you'll get really re um, disorganized and everything gets messed up. So only two at a time works really well because you can really stay organized as to which piece goes where. All right, does that make sense? Are we good on questions? Oh, it, I'm sure it'll be a speedy recovery. It's just um, just having a knee uh, meniscus repair, so just a scope. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure Mr. HP will take good care. Yeah, of you. Mr. Honey Producer is gonna take good care of me, right? Yes. Um, do yeah, I need to get a bell? Can I get a bell, no. please? Can I get a bell? <laughs> I'm not a bell boy. Oh, that would be really awesome. Or a bell man. Can I use my phone and use like a ringer tone on my phone? You do that anyway. <laughs> okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this first part. But again, watch the videos again and again. Um, later tonight or tomorrow, we'll have the blog up blog updated. Oh, not until tomorrow, we'll have the blog updated with all the links and everything back to the video. So I wanted to mention these, talk about these two awesome quilts here. Um, these two, the Venus in the back, this is done with our Moody Bloom bundle and front, you can make the quilt and the runner. The runner is the little Kim from the bundle. Of course, not the border for the quilt. But these guys were made, these were made by Connie. Thanks Connie for letting me borrow them to show everybody. So uh, the Moody Bloom bundle came in last week. I don't know if you, I showed you, showed everybody, but um, a lot of you pre-ordered it. So we have, now it's, we still have some in stock and we're actually getting more. So um, this is just awesome. Cause it's really cool for Venus cause it's got kind of lights and darks and, and you can kind of play with it. So that's Moody Bloom and so great job. Connie, thank you for letting us borrow it. And um, just a few things I wanted to mention too. I, I totally forgot last Friday to show you uh, the coordinate, coordinates that go with the cider bundle. Cider came in on Friday, just fresh. And so this fabric line, uh, this bundle was also pre-ordered. So we already shipped to all of you that pre-ordered. But I just love this colorway. Uh, really nice kind of fallish colors and then we have the one yards because it's made by basic gray so usually basic gray designs grunge so usually they come out with grunge colors that match each um, color or, or each fabric line that they do and they're not the basic grunges so these are the grunges that go with this and the colors are Marion Berry Pie, Mulled Cider, pumpkin cookies and roasted marshmallows. So really great. So we have these in one yard and we still have some bundles. I think this is so awesome. I love this colorway. And then I wanted to mention, cause I have had lots of questions. We have the Buffalo plaids back in stock, the gray, the diagonal Buffalo plaids, the gray, the black, and the red. These are back in stock. We have a few of the tulip pink now in one yards. We got some extras of these. Um, I love these bright, fun colors. So these are new in our one yards. And then we have a brand new bundle that I wanted to show you. That is for all the guys. Well, I actually think it's for girls too. But the fabric line is called Man Cave. So, yeah, full yeah. time. <laughs> so we have some dart boards. And do you like to play darts? Um, well, I should know. I know the answer to that. Um, who wins most times when we play darts? I think I win, beat you at that. Haven't I? <laughs> Silence. Silence. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Then we have playing cards in two colorways. Who wins when we play cards? Um, 
I think it's 50-50. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have game controllers for the video gamers. That would not be us. Unless it's Pac-Man. Then I will totally kill it. Uh, pool. We play pool. And? That's pretty even. Um, you usually beat me, but we, I give you a good fight. As you can see, we're pretty competitive. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have this really fun print, the type print. Welcome to the man cave, always open, no working. My cave, my sanctuary, selective hearing only, all day gaming, no chick flicks. <laughs> That's kind of fun. And it has, uh, that one comes in two colorways. So I picked, um, I kind of handpicked the bundle. And then we have two kind of basics, but I love it. It's kind of like wood paneling and the light and dark. And then we have, um, put it here, and then we have the buffalo plaid that kind of ties all, all together because there's black and red accents. But the fun, fun part about this, this, f this pattern is called the man plaid. <laughs> I just read that in the, when I, I looked at my packing slip. It's the man plaid to go with a man cave. So we have some of this. Uh, we're actually getting a little bit more um hopefully next week things are kind of coming in batches but um really fun if you want to make something for the man cave or not if if there's not a man cave just for the guys or the gals maybe like pool or darts or whatever i love it so i wouldn't mind it let all me, right let me make you you want to make me? You want to make me a man cave quilt? Yes, I would love to see what that would look it like. Look like something I would make. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I'll get those fabric press and ready for you. <laughs> All right. So I think that's it. Oh, so another thing that's new in the store, or not new, restocks. Lots of the basic bundles. I know the Aurora bundles. Lupin bundles, grays, uh, light fabric bundles. That's all kind of restocked. We've got a lot of that back. So, lots and lots of info today, tonight. And so I know your head's exploding. So how about a winner for all of your hard work listening and paying attention? Uh, Diana Cutzall. Cutzall. Congratulations, Diana. You have won a $25 gift card. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. And send us a quick email, help at gequildesigns.com, and uh, we will get that gift card to you right away. But, of course, there is a second chance to win. We have our giveaway question, and that one just kind of came about because here in Minnesota, it's, of course, midst of winter, even though today it was, it was kind of like March weather, wasn't it? It was like it was above freezing, so... It was 37, which was felt like a spring day. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it too much because I know the cold is coming. We got snow coming and cold, but it was beautiful. And a little bit of sunshine because we have, didn't, haven't had sunshine for a long time. So, but always for winter, for me, I love to make soups. So we, I usually make soup, what, twice a week? And we make a lot of soups. Yeah. And so w here's the giveaway question. What is your favorite soup? I always, when, when people tell me I don't like soup, I'm like, what? Where are you from? <laughs> I love soups, and they're so good the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Yeah, you can they soups. just get better. Just make a big pot and keep eating. Yeah, so, okay, what is your favorite soup? We talked about this. Have you decided what is your favorite soup? Uh, I've got a few, too, but... My number one absolute, if I had to only have one bowl of soup before I died, <laughs> it would be lobster lobster bisque from, from the one restaurant in Iceland called Fjordabordet, Stock City. That would be that. I would even say that's pretty, Same? That's With amazing. their homemade bread. Yeah. It's like nothing else. Lobster soup from, from Fjordabordet. But, and then, yeah, my ginger noodle soup, ginger, ginger noodle. curry noodle soup, it's really good. I need to make some. I might make some 
this week <laughs> once I can stand again. A good tomato bisque. Tomato basil. Oh yeah. Tomato basil is just. Mm. And a mushroom soup. Oh. And a mushroom. Cream those of mushroom. Are, are homemade. Whole, it has to be homemade. Cream of mushroom. Mm. Okay. okay. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> All the soups are coming in. So we love to hear what is your favorite soup, and you get a chance to win another twenty-five dollar gift card. Um, let us know, and and like I said, we will announce the winner for uh, the soup question next week, which will be Tipsy Tuesday. It's going to be January 19th, 7 p.m. Central, both on Facebook and YouTube, and part two of the Wanda Quilt Along. And so I will also be here next Friday, this coming Friday, January 15th, 3 p.m. for a Happy Friday show. Don't miss it. I will answer some Wanda questions. For sure, but um, hopefully all goes well. Just rewatch the video and keep them coming. I can't wait to work on some more blocks and finish my eight blocks myself. I, I, I'm really loving how this is turning out. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else we need to talk about? I think that's it. Say a little prayer for me for tomorrow. I'll be home on the couch, hopefully. Couple hours after surgery, icing my knee and watching some good shows. That's it. Thank you all for being here tonight. I will see you hopefully Friday. If not, Tipsy Tuesday next week. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.